What's up everybody? Tom Coffey here, founder of ObstacleCourseWorkouts.com. I've got a little bit of time before a meeting I'm going to, so I wanted to film a quick video for you guys explaining the difference between circuit training and high intensity interval training, also known as HIT. So the problem is that people use these two terms, circuit training uh, and HIT workouts interchangeably, when really they're actually two different things. So let's talk about what they are first, right? Kind of zoom out and define what each of these is. So circuit training is really stringing together like four to eight exercises, right? Where you put them back to back, you might have minimal rest or no rest um, between exercises with the intent being to do the exercises as quickly as you can with good form, right? So that'd be a circuit, like four to eight, um, I don't think you really need to go more. We'll get into this more in a little bit in a few minutes here, but uh, people get a little carried away with circuits and make them like 15 exercises. You don't need to do that. Let's just keep it simple, right? Four to eight full body exercises in a circuit done back to back with minimal to no rest between exercises is going to be plenty. So that's what a circuit and that's what circuit training really is. Uh, the difference is that high intensity interval training, also known as HIT, H-I-I-T, is that HIIT training is usually just one or two exercises done at near 100% intensity, uh, maximal effort, and basically done as hard as you can for, say, about 10 seconds to two minutes. Again, the length will vary um, for debate, but that's sort of the difference. So with circuit training, right, let's dive into kind of a, a little bit of the, the nuances now. Um, circuit training, you can, you know, there's really no like great set length for circuits. Um, but I do think that a good range for circuit training is about three minutes to 30 minutes with the rule of thumb that if the circuit is three minutes long, the intensity should be much higher than if it's something like a 20 or 30 minute just grind session, right? But uh, again, you're doing these exercises back to back. So that's sort of the, again, you can push a circuit up to 90 minutes. You can do, you know, 60, you can do 43 and a half minutes. There's no perfect set time, but just as that rule of thumb, as the circuit gets longer in length, the effort level should start to decrease, right? You, because you just can't go full out for 30 minutes it's just not gonna not gonna happen but you can still get a killer workout in 30 minutes that would rate still pretty hard um with high intensity interval training there again there's no like perfect length for an interval but common intervals that seem to work really well are about 10 seconds to two minutes in length with the effort level being as hard as possible so some examples of this would be you know, hill sprinting, uh, wind sprints in general, something like a prowler push, short prowler push, um, sled drags, things like that, cardio bike sprints, right? Rower sprints, jump roping intervals, stuff like even burpees, even like 30 seconds to 60 seconds or two minutes of burpees, pretty hard. Um, but things like that, where that really jack your heart rate up, keep it there, and then you take some time uh, off as a rest period. So that's that's uh sort of the difference as we start to unpack this a little bit um just to just to recap here circuit training are many exercises let's call it between four to eight done back to back with minimal to no rest between the exercises just the transition time the goal with circuit training would be to elevate your heart rate and start to work for a period of like three to, and I use 30 minutes. That's a pretty good length for a circuit. Um, you know, you can obviously go longer than that, but sort of that range of three to 30 minutes for your circuits with the rule of thumb that as the circuit gets longer, the overall intensity of effort will start to decrease, decrease slightly, right? Um, not to say 30 minute circuit would be easy because you can definitely put together some hard ones, but it wouldn't be as taxing as like a hundred percent full out sprint where which leads us to high intensity interval training 
which is really like one to two exercises done at near maximal intensity for let's say a period of 10 seconds to two minutes and again the the emphasis here is the intensity piece these should be very hard your heart rate should be jacked to the roof right you should feel like you're tasting pennies in your mouth that's actually the alveoli in your lungs kind of bursting that's what that penny copper taste is believe it or not um not necessarily a bad thing but the 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 high intensity interval training workouts should be very hard as the name would imply and a few so a few ways like uh i guess ways you can incorporate these into your own training people often think okay you know if, if these type of workouts are great for especially for preparing for obstacle course races then i should do them every day right to which i say slow down slow down no way um the ideal you know frequency for circuit training i think is about one to three days per week if you're doing pretty hard circuits you probably won't want to do much more than that uh, especially if you're um, doing some sort of hybrid training approach then like one to three days a week is perfect on the high intensity interval training side i recommend about one to two days because if you're doing full out efforts you're going to need some time in between those workouts to recover right um, like two days or three days is, is ideal uh, if you're doing those type of workouts like five days a week you run the risk of burning out your central nervous system maybe even suffering from overuse injury um, and hurting yourself in training so that one to two day per week it seems to be the sweet spot if you are truly going full out and leaving nothing on the table with those workouts right um, so I'll say it again circuit training probably best done at a frequency of one to three times per week in your obstacle course workout training routine high intensity interval training is probably best done at a frequency of one to two times per week in your obstacle course workout training routine and this is sort of assuming that you're going to be doing other things as well you're having a little bit of a hybrid approach to training um, which is another video in of itself but that's uh and again the goal here is to get better and prepare for the rigors of an obstacle course race to which circuit training and and hit training um, hit workouts are awesome for that without leading to training injuries overuse injuries burning out your central nervous system you know frying yourself melting yourself into a puddle before you even get into the race that's the stuff this stuff is powerful but it's it needs to be done in some sort of moderation to reap the the benefits from it um so there's a lot of ways that you can like actually put together these type of of workouts if you're if you want some example workouts you could actually pull and start doing today i've written a blog article going into more detail about circuit training versus hit training it's linked in the description below and it includes three sample workouts of each type of of exercise circuit training and hit um, so check that out Click the link in the description below to be whisked away to that blog article and you know read more about circuit training and hit training and then pull one of those workouts maybe try one of each and and uh you know see what you think hope you enjoyed the video looking forward to chatting with you soon thanks so much